The history of the Old West is always interesting to people. Are there any good stories around this area that you guys can think of? Well, everyone knows about Oliver Lee. Was he a good guy or a bad guy? Uh, what about the guy who lived in Dog Canyon around the time Oliver Lee settled there? Uh, Frenchie? That was his name, right? Francois Jean Roches arrived in New Mexico Territory in 1881. And then apparently Roches was being credited for being the master carpenter of the famous Laura Chapel staircase in Santa Fe. The staircase is unique and crafted with European wood. It spirals between the chapel and choir loft with little to no traditional structural supports. That would explain why he was in New Mexico, given he came all the way from France. The documented history in the book Loretto, the Sisters in their Santa Fe Chapel states that Frenchie was a agent of cargo on the SS St. Laurent on a trip for a partially assembled staircase from France to New York in 1881. Then, once he arrived at New York, he took a train from there to Santa Fe. How do we know he got here, though? Well, the nuns at the Loretto Chapel kept a day book. It lists Roches as being paid for completion of his work. Uh, There's also a documentation that he completed additional work for a school and another staircase for a sanitarium in the area. Why did they choose him of all people? Well, Frenchie had a connection to the Loretto contractor since they were both French, and he was acquainted with the Archbishop in Santa Fe. He spent eight to ten years in Dog Canyon. He arrived there around 1883 or 84. Frenchy pretty much changed the face of the mountain building walls, right? Yeah, he had to do that to keep his cattle in. Who is Morrison? Well, Morrison was Frenchie's, Frenchie's ranch hand, who Frenchie hired to help with some of the cattle and the horses. Morrison was pretty much an orphan at the time. Frenchie was actually doing him a favor when he hired him. Hey boss, your horse has turned out. He should have plenty of grass for the next few days. Thank you, Morrison. Good work. Frenchie still had family in France, and we know that from the letters found in his cabin. Even though he settled in the canyon alone, he kept in touch with his sister and his brother in France. So, who was the first person to settle Dog Canyon? So, out of Oliver Lee and Frenchie, Frenchie was the first person to settle in Dog Canyon as he arrived in 1884. So, Oliver Lee arrived later? Yeah, he surveyed the land in 1885, but then he settled in 1889. And there's even more proof that Frenchie and Oliver Lee were working together because they found uh, Frenchie's woodworking tools at the Oliver Lee Ranch House when they excavated it. Yeah, so that could imply that uh, Frenchie helps with all the woodworking inside of Oliver Lee's house since he had really nice windows and doors and everything. seen better work. Truly are skilled, Roches. I have two more to finish. 
My nachos in. Need to get the seedlings in. Hmm. Well, I'll see you after the seedlings are in then. Frenchie kind of took Morrison under his wing, kind of like a father figure. That was till Morrison decided to steal some of Frenchie's horses. Yeah, and then upon finding out that Morrison stole horses, Frenchie was pretty angry, so he fired the boy. Morrison probably wasn't too happy with that, was he? Yeah, he was very angry at the, the man, so he decided to stake out an ambush. He waited in the fields until Frenchie was busy working. Wounded, Morrison flees. Morrison was apprehended by some ranchers and he was then taken to the local authorities. Frenchie decided to file charges against Morrison for the attack. Then, Morrison was sentenced to at least 30 years in the state penitentiary. Do we know what happens after the penitentiary for Morrison? Well, there's no known records after that for Morrison. Sir. I'm good. Boss sent me here to see how you're getting along. Very well. Please thank Mr. Lee for his concerns. I heard you went to court. Yes. I filed papers. Morrison is a dangerous young man, as well as a horse thief. It's good he is jailed. Indeed. Well, I gotta get back to the range. Good day, Mr. Roches. Frenchie built a relationship. Weren't they in the same canyon though? Wouldn't you think they'd be enemies? Well, they were in the same canyon, but they actually shared all the canyon resources and everything, and they helped each other. Didn't they build the water channel together? Yeah, they helped build the Ezekiel to each other, which ran from the mouth of the canyon to Frenchie's, to Frenchie's property, which included his cattle and his crops and his orchard, and then it went to Oliver Lee's property, which had his house and his cattle and all of his crops. Channel will work well. We should be finished in a week or two. Sure hope so. It's far better than having to haul water manually so often. And maybe no need to drive the stock up to the canyon to the source. Certainly wouldn't think so. Kind of depends on the canyon though. Once we have the Sasekia finished, our collection pool should hold enough water and irrigate from there. The plan is adequate. But the earth is resistant. You gonna increase your stock this year? None. None. 
you have thought about it. You have considered selling some of my stock. You am not the young man anymore. I understand. Without my hands at the ranch, I wouldn't be able to manage. And I'm not going to be picking up any livestock until we get this Asikia finished either. Prices are fair at the moment though. Something to consider. When you next go to town, I will discuss the terms. Frenchy started growing older. He considered selling his cattle to John Riley and William Reinerson of the Tularosa Land and Cattle Company. Frenchy met with Reinerson and Riley in June 1892. Good day, Mr. Rochess. Please have a seat. Good day, sir. It looked to you both. I'm William Reinerson, and uh, you're here to discuss the sale of a few of your cattle, correct? Yes. Several hundred head, if the price is fair. We will be offering you a fair market price. Very good. So, I see that you have a registered brand and you manage your stock very well. So, how many cattle will you be selling today? Just over 400 head, if that may be arranged. 400? A little more than 400. Well, the market is strong, and we can find a buyer for you. That is fine. So, we will tender payment a year after the agreement is set. Very good. Please work out the details. Have a good day, Mr. Roches. You too, sir. Have a good day. Wasn't the Land and Cattle Company a part of a larger group of livestock brokers? Tularosa Land and Cattle Company were actually part of a corrupt cattle syndicate in the area. That group was known as the Santa Fe Rain. Well, they did seem to drag their feet in the agreement to pay Frenchie for his cattle. The payment for the cattle was to be paid within one year of their agreement. But then in July 1893, Ryanston died, delaying the payment. That date came and went, and Frenchie still hadn't been paid. Then in 1894, Frenchie was finally paid half of what he was owed. Soon after that, Frenchie filed a suit in court, asking for the balance of what was owed to him. In July of 1894, Frenchie was awarded a judgment against the Tularosa Land and Cattle Company, and Riley was ordered by the court to pay the remaining balance plus interest. Five more months pass, and in the fall of 1894, word gets around that Frenchie has not yet been paid. Mr. Roches, are you here? Mr. Roches, are you here?
So did Frenchie ever get the rest of his money? He didn't, because December later that year, he was gunned down in his cabin. Numa Raymond, a friend of Frenchie, was notified of his death. So he contacted a probate judge who started inventorying Frenchie's estate. And from there, he contacted Frenchie's family in France. Upon finding out, Frenchie's family decided to take action against the La Rosa Land and Cattle Company. Eventually, they were successful, getting the money that was owed to Frenchie.